having a baby really put a lot into perspective and it's really slowed me down a lot. But it's like the most beautiful thing. I just want to take a second and enjoy it. It's not about the destination, it's the journey. I never really got time or really had like the bandwidth to experience the journey to its fullest. So I guess that's what I'm trying to do now. Life will do that to you. Parent, it'll definitely do that to you. Put success and ambition in perspective. That's what we're here for, some perspective, where I get to come to the legendary Henson Studios, hang out with, well, one of my favorite artists of the modern age. He's made an album that I've certainly been waiting for, and I think a lot of us have. You can hear it, you can see it. The guitar's in his hand, the songs are at the forefront, the album's called Austin, and well, here we are again. A guitar in his hand. Uh, uh, uh. What up, Dad? <laughs> Oh, are you? Oh, good to see you, Zaniac. I'm not gonna lie, it looks good. Good to see you, Zaniac. <laughs> looks good on you, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah. How often do you pick that thing up when you're not recording? I don't know. Loading screens in video games. Whenever the game's loading, I'll pick it up and put it put it back down. <laughs> I don't do much anymore, Zane. Do you think that it it, it calls to you a little? Can I actually hold that for a sec? Do you think it calls? To, well, it's funny, you know, with 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 guitars, because. I really feel like while they're sitting there, it, it's hard for me to not sabotage you. To not feel like to not feel like you don't. <laughs> to not feel like there's songs waiting to be written. Don't you ever get that sensation sometimes? Like, man, if I just pick this up, is something going to be there waiting for me? Maybe so. With reverb, yes. Because reverb makes. I wish I could live my life in reverb. In reverb, which would just be the most amazing thing. I just think it'd be a little cold. <laughs> No, no, I don't know. I feel like it'd be a little warmer. It depends on, uh, on the reverb. Yeah, it depends on Valhalla or whatever. Uh, Chris Lord Ange. Um, but I don't know. I think if I if I have some reverb or like if I go, that's what I do. I sit on the the can. Yeah. And there's good acoustics in the bathroom for the most part. And so it's like that natural reverb there. You know, when we started the last conversation, I picked up on the last song of the last album, which was a voice note from January the 3rd, 2020. Yes, sir, and you played the hell out of it. When I heard this new album, I feel like this latest album, almost in a weird way, could have begun at that moment because there's so much beautiful acoustic guitar on it. Thank you, sir. And so I went to the last song on the album and I was like, how does that one go? And it feels like an extension, almost, of that moment. You know, laugh it off, don't you think, a little bit? Like the way that you sort of picked up where you left off? Yes, sir. Does it feel that way to you? I, I, I'd say so. I think, I don't know, it's super... Really nice, really nice. You wrote it, bro. Me, me, Andrew, and Lou doing all the. It was so fun, I tell you, to play, play guitar on the on like every song. Yeah. And like really do cool chords because like I don't know this song has a bunch of cool chords and it has a really. I'm gonna good try and get to one in a second, man. This next one's not easy. This little C. Mm -hmm. It's cool, huh? I, it's I remember cool, I was dude. sitting there, I was like, dude, that's so that's fucking cool, man. It's a cool song. Thank uh, you for learning that. Thank you for playing that. Of that's course. really pretty when you do it. You know, I think I've been waiting. I don't I don't want to speak for anybody else. I've been waiting for a moment like this. I, I love the journey you've been on to make this record. You know, the albums you've made, the hits you've had, successes you've had. But this idea of you being able to pick up a guitar and sit in a room with, with a couple of friends and just kind of pour your heart and soul out into an instrument like that and then build from there. I've been waiting for that. Have you been waiting to make it? I don't know necessarily if I've been waiting to make it. Um, it's always something that's kind of been wanted to be made, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know, a lot of the times we go in and we do, the music and the the melody has never really been the way I, that I work. The music and the melody has never been written at the same time. It's usually there's music there and then the melody comes after. But like with that, just being able to sit there, like I said, reverb cross-legged here over in I think Studio D. Um, here at Hanson, yes, sir. Amazing. We did just about. I don't know, 75% of it here in Watson. Wow. Just sit there cross-legged with the cans on and mm. so much reverb, and then you're like, okay, what if like, okay, what if we go, mm. what is that first quarter of the hook? And then to, to the A, and then to the, oh wait, what is it? Is it? I don't even remember. 
You want me to show you how to yeah, play your yeah, own song? <laughs> I think I might have transcribed it badly, bro. But as far as no, I'm I think that's it, it right. Like, and then something down here. It's a C sharp. It's a C sharp. But at least I jogged your memory. Yeah, thank you very much. You got it. I appreciate you. Well, yeah, and that's... Let me tell you a time one time. I don't think I'll do it I appreciate camera, you very you, much. I'll tell you when one time when I tried to tell Paul McCartney how to play Blackbird. Yeah. Well, hey, sometimes you need it because you just get in a flow. He didn't need it. Then... He said to me, Zane, I wrote it. <laughs> well, actually, it's more like this. You know? <laughs> he just wasn't nutty. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, you get to really experiment. Like, that C, I guess now, it's a C sharp. Uh, For now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> And I guess I never would have gone to that chord, like making or using FL, like mm -hmm. making a production, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool. And it was a really eye opening experience for me and how I could write music and how I could make music. And it's not just one way. It's just like you, there's so many different ways. Like you said, it's just mm -hmm. your a song is there. You just got to find it. Yeah, and, you know, I don't remember who said it, and someone said, "This is might be random, but um, they said there are no bad chords. You're just not brave enough to try that shit." <laughs> so I was, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's not. I won't be lost on anyone that you've gone to your to your real name for the album again. As a writer, I feel you've been revealing yourself one album at a time, more sure. and more. Sure. And this is easily the most revealing record that you've released. Sure. Um, I wanted to just start there start with because it's courageous to open up your life this much and talk about the things i think that perhaps you celebrated a lot sure. when you're on the up material things mm -hmm. drugs mm -hmm. alcohol mm -hmm. fame success women all that it's like you've come to the end of that cycle that's what the album feels like to me i guess having a baby really put a lot into perspective and it's really slowed me down a lot um like party wise, you know, going out and being crazy and but it's like the most beautiful thing. And I don't know. It's like I'm trying to get some land right now. You already know uh the end is nigh. So <laughs> You believe that though? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird. A little bit? It's yeah, I, I definitely I definitely do. So like yeah. I just wanna get my stuff and I wanna go out and do shows, but then I just wanna, you know, we, yeah. we got out of LA and now we live in Salt Lake. So now I'm And you try to get further where, out. Well, I guess so, yes, sir. Interesting. So, and, and that's kind of like me, like, mm, so I just wanna take some time now and actually, you mentioned, you know, all the, you know, accoutrement of success. Mm. And everything that comes with that. You list it and on something I, real. You list them all on something real. I just want to kind of take a second and enjoy it. I just want to take a minute and be like, you know, it is that it was amazing. It is amazing. But I never really got to stop and smell the roses, you know. And then you get caught up in like, it's not about the destination. It's the journey. And yeah. I never really got time or really had like the bandwidth to experience the journey to it's fullest so i guess that's what i'm trying to do now well you make it sound like peace but it's also you know i know you were kind of throwing it out there but it, it comes from a place of from a disastrous thought the idea of how do i protect my family mm. when all around me crumbles sure is that what's motivating it um not fully i i love i love um making music i love being at home with my family i love I love a whole lot of things and it's not it's not just about making it to to where my family's safe if something crazy does happen. Um it's just about like if it does happen, I do want them and everybody in my life and everybody to be safe and happy. But yeah, it's an interesting thing and I was talking to somebody actually just about what you it's like a control thing. You want to be and I, it maybe it's just natural human nature to be like okay i want to know exactly what's going on that's why like shit like death and like aliens and all that shit scare us because mm. we're like i don't know mm. what that is and that like bothers us and the alien thing us. is crazy though don't you feel like in the last three years mm -hmm. that shit is like ramped up oh it's so real it's not even funny it's like it's crazy too it's crazy and it's super interesting that now like 
you look back at like Roswell and they're like, oh, we found a weather balloon and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. But even like the Battle of Los Angeles, like, mm -hmm. have you seen the pictures? Of, I like, love, I love that film. Dude, no, the oh, the oh, like what it's based off. No, of. like in I don't know, maybe it was the forties or fifties. There was this object, and there's pictures of us like trying to blow it up, like big spotlights. You can see the rounds going through the air, like shooting at this thing, and no one like really talks about it. like that's what you saw the movie but yeah. you didn't even know like that's like a thing yeah it's crazy <laughs> but like even now for them to be like oh well you know we didn't really we didn't have any we didn't see anything but there was nothing there but now the, even the pilots and everybody they're like we definitely saw some shit there's definitely something do you know have you seen them in utah but there's a shitload of them. I've been to Skinwalker Ranch. That place is amazing. You actually went? Yeah. I watched the TV show. Dude, it's it so made my skin crawl. Dude, it did is you so feel sick. it? Dude, it is so weird. What did None you feel? of the technology works. It's really weird. But what did you feel? Over there, it was just so interesting. You could definitely feel it. it the heat, they took us all around. We went to all the homesteads, all the the towers, and just saw like stuff from the show. The show's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but if you watch the show, you can't be like, assuming it's real, which I assume it's real after meeting everybody and being there and doing all that, you can't like deny it. You're like, something is definitely happening here. I mean, it, just to deny your curiosity on what exists mm -hmm. beyond our own concept is, is or our, our ability to, to take in is just boring. But it just, you're such an interesting cat because it's clear to me that you've suffered throughout your life from a pretty acute form of anxiety. Sure. And yet you have this desire to put yourself into these places where sure. anxiety would really thrive. Sure. Like the unknown, the idea of, of what's, in, what's in that ventilation shaft. Right. Well, yeah. And I don't know that I was, I was saying before, it, like if you, people wanted to know or not, like people, I'm sure if you ask somebody if, two questions, if you're like, do you want to know what happens after you die? Mm. Or do you want to know if aliens exist? Because it'd be like to what happens after you die, I'd be like, no, not really, because I'm. Uh, that's gonna happen. Right. But the whole alien deal is like you don't know if the aliens are gonna come down and vaporize you. Right. What if they're like your cool? What if they're your cool uncle from I've space? I've never felt that there was that, that an alien life form would take on the form and with the intention that the movies have always told us. Right. Well, what, what's the point in coming down like, yeah. like we're, it's like shooting fish in a barrel? Maybe they want um, the resources. Our, yeah, our gold. Dude, you have this curiosity for the things in life that a lot of people would try to avoid. Um, you gave two or three really good examples of that. There's a ton of examples mm. on this album as well. Um, you have to some degree lived a life of excess and you've worked excessively hard. Yes, sir. And given an excessive amount of great mu music and, you, and, and art to us as fans. You. But you've definitely, for your young years, you've, you've put yourself through it. And and you've opened up about that stuff on the sure. record. I've never asked you outright, but I mean, do you think that you've come, you, you've come to the point where you can acknowledge that alcohol is a weakness for you, that it's a problem? Very much so. It's very frustrating. Mm. Um, but now if I do drink and I'm not doing like a show or recording, and yeah, that's another, I have a very hard time expressing myself uh, via recording, if I'm not a little fucked up, it's tough. It's, isn't it? it's a good spot now because if I'm not recording or I'm not um, talking to people or if I'm not doing shows, I really do drink just to have fun. Like it's like having a beer with my dad or with my butt. This is the updated time we've spoken, mm. and I always love it, and I am grateful yes, for sir. it every time. Yes, sir. Well, it's I hope you know it's the same. same. I hope you know it's the same. But I would hate to think that you know being a part of this experience with any of us mm. would be would 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 lead, enable that behavior if you didn't want well, to well not at all it's um it has nothing to do i love talking to you i love talking to you and i've you've always been so kind to me so i i love talking to you and i feel like every time we talk there's always something that i can take home and and become better about it or think about something and i don't know it's you you're an amazing man and i appreciate, I appreciate you having it. me on the same way um, it's funny you know in my conversation sometimes people are like oh you know do you have to tell your stories but i think it's important i share this one like i um you know i was drinking a lot and i was in a bad place too and in the end it was a real combination of like going and talking to somebody and beginning the work and i don't know if you've done therapy or you do therapy mm -hmm. but also my wife 
was like the deal breaker, like mm-hmm. her, her unconditional support sure. and her belief in me mm-hmm. in the sense of like, come on, get together. Um, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does. It definitely does. And it's just, it's to the point to where you're like, yeah, you know what, I'll do it. But then you get in front of people and then you're like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have a hard time communicating with people. And that's like, I don't know. It's a really, especially now, whenever I was saying before, whenever I was a kid, I, you know, I would walk, run around and I'd be like, hey, you know, I didn't really care. Now I don't, I don't know why. It's, it's just a really interesting thing. It's a crazy life you have. Mm. I mean, we don't ever talk about the trauma that comes with pursuing a passion and then quickly becoming recognizable and having to justify your identity and your, and your, your reason for making art in front of a lot of people. Mm. I don't think we talk about that enough. Mm. I think we like sort of fold that into the idea of uh, your dreams coming true. Sure. Don't complain. Sure. But that's all I do is bitch though. <laughs> on all my songs. <laughs> but it's, I guess it's your outlet. But sure, that, that's what's, yeah, so unique. So, yeah. what's so unique about this album is that I don't feel like there's a lot of complaining going on. I feel like there's a lot of self-awareness and self-reflection. Sure, sure. I'm starting with a song like Don't Understand. Mm. You talked about self-confidence. Mm. I mean, that one is, I mean, you were pouring your heart and soul out mm. into that song about the idea of somebody loving you can find a million reasons mm. to love you and you can't think of one. Right. It's a heartbreaking lyric. Right. Where were you when you wrote that? Here. Do you remember? Here. What was going on? I don't know. I don't remember... But I remember Andrew, because Andrew came in with the riff. He's so good. But he he had he had like, so it was it was like this thing, it was that little riff, and then he went to something else. But I was just like, what if we let that? Yeah, just yeah. let that ring out there. And just let it go, so you can really fill in that space, almost like. Mm like stop verse you're like you know stop lyric and Mm. i don't know but that was a cool song i think that was the first one that we did i think that was the first one that we did in d who were you listening to when you were a kid that you can hear on this record that you have perhaps haven't gone you know haven't acknowledged before even through your subconscious filter of being a fan i never really talk about i was playing before i really never talk about radiohead and how fucking badass they are um Never well. I talked about Stevie, but I love Fleetwood mm. Mac. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm the Radiohead trying. thing is interesting, though, man, yeah. because hearing you play High and Dry before, mm-hmm. I was thinking about that song. You kill yourself to get attention. That lyric is so yeah. powerful yeah. because it talks about um, the disconnection between what's good for you versus right. what's good for everybody else. And that's really, especially now. Imagine that song because that's like. Literally TikTok. I watched a guy pour bleach on his face. <laughs> he was like, you know what? We got 4,000 people watching. I'm going mean, to do it right no. now. And I'm like, why are I mean, you? No. You kill yourself for recognition. I mean, Make a sandwich. It, it, it's crazy. <laughs> Go and do that see, sandwich to not, someone that's who needs gonna it. That's not going to get the views, man. That's not going to get the Only do the something. bleach is going to do do it. <laughs> okay. He's like, and I'm going to hold my eyes open like this. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? He did it. But and you know I what? Saw it happen. But, the dudes with the, but the dudes with the bleach always existed. They just didn't have a phone in their yeah, hand. There's right? no platform. I grew up with a few guys. dudes with bleach. You know what I mean? Who did that? I you definitely. Know what? I'll do it. Yeah. But see, and now if it was just you uh-huh. and your buddy at the house, and you're hanging out with like six people at a kickback, he's like, okay, if everyone watches. I'm going to do it. I'm That's six it. people. But now he's like, okay, 4,000? All right, let's go. Definitely now I'll do it. it. Now I'll do it. Yeah. Imagine what that bleach guy would do for 4,000 people. Jesus Christ. I don't really want it. Exactly. It's, I don't know. It's crazy. It's also a place where fans, I think, air their thoughts. And again, they can be destructive and mean. That's always existed. Mm-hmm. They can be concerned. Mm-hmm. There was a time there when you were on the road. I think people were genuinely concerned for your health. Yeah. Did they get to you? Yes. I mean, first off... I shouldn't have to really justify anything to anyone, um, but I appreciate the concerns that people, but then it just goes like, it goes from like, hey, like, I hope he's fine, but then the rumor starts that right. I'm doing hard drugs, which I've never done in my entire life. Right. So it's like, oh. Never? Th- this is what, no, never. Wow. This is what crack looks like, kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when I was, I was a kid, like, the pharmaceuticals. But I haven't touched that stuff in years and years and years. I had like 
one big scare when I was a kid, and I was just like, you know what, I, it's, Near death? it's not worth like, it. Like, bad? I felt like it. Yeah. I didn't go to the hospital or anything, but yeah. th I never want to feel like that ever, ever again. So I never, especially as a kid, you know, drinking lean and, mm. you know, Xanax and all that shit. And, like, that's, that's I mean, that was a thing. And for me, it's not. And so it's left a lasting impression, though, because there are definitely touchstones on this album that refer to it. You, you, you use them as metaphors in quite an interesting way. Chemical. Mm. I know the chemical reactions can come from lots of different things. It's mm -hmm. not just through, mm -hmm. through drugs and whatnot. Um, the idea of the of, of being in an attractive relationship with someone right. and it feeling like a chemical reaction. I get that. But, you know, Nova Candy and, and even like things like, you know, my friends. Um, they will take vitamins. Now yes, they sir. could be healthy vitamins, but yes, you could that could also be something else. Mushrooms. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yes, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. right. And it, there's another <laughs> interesting thing where you talk about violence after that. I just wanted a little bit about what your thoughts were on that lyrical idea because we talked a little bit about hallucinogenics. In fact, you made your last album or wrote a majority of your last album yes, sir. during a mushroom trip. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you still using? Like, yeah, I take shrooms. Yeah, I like shrooms. I like shrooms not as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. It's really affected my short-term memory <laughs> it's interesting because it's supposed to promote <laughs> right which is it's it's but ever since like because i used to maybe it was just a stint yeah. of habitual overuse like right, right, daily right um but now i take um a little bar of chocolate with my buddies yeah a little square of chocolate and just laugh and laugh and laugh at some point if I, if i would like to as i get older try to see if it can promote that that active growth. Do you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And I think, you know, I was talking to um, a ranger buddy of mine. He was a ranger. And um, he was saying they're giving it to guys for, like, PTSD and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so, that's cool. Because a lot of the times, you know, a lot of, a lot of, like, uh, pharmaceuticals, they have, like, negative reactions yeah. often. yeah. And um, it's cool to see that they're giving them this, you know, this medicine and it's actually like working. He was yeah. saying his body was like, you know, uh, going through it and it really helped him a lot. It's, I don't know, it's interesting because it's improved, it has mm. improved my view on things. You know, um, making the last record, I was so, 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 well, writing it, I was so, so sad, you know? But now, I'm so happy. And I, I, it's definitely improved my my viewpoint on life. So. Yeah, I mean, but the, I, I feel like the, that, that all makes total sense. And you seem like in the best place you've ever been in, you know? And, and I just wonder whether the songs like um, Landmine mm. and Enough is Enough, mm. these really very open, honest mm. reflections when alcohol turns on you yes sir and because if we drink it enough it's going to turn on us exactly and the next thing you know to your point and this is, i'm just quoting lyrics here badly you know you, you find yourself sitting on a sidewalk in sin city talking to people who aren't there <laughs> sure yeah i mean that's definitely happened and it's not <clears throat> writing that song was not about current experiences mm. it's not like i can't go to vegas Without doing the, yeah, that time has come and gone. Well, without losing yeah. a shitload of money. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's the yeah. problem there. I'm like, right. every time I go, I'm like, oh, I'm never going. Oh, I, I hate go. fucking gambling. But then, but then you start, then you start over and you're like, you know what? I'm going to rob this place tonight. <laughs> and then you <laughs> yeah, smoke yeah. your cigar and then yeah. you go in hot shit. Yeah. And then you yeah. walk away yeah. four in the morning. Posty on like, table seven. God damn. Posty on table seven. <laughs> and then you're like, you know what? Keep Nick, it coming. If I get 200 more. Another drink, sir. I, I can, uh, Another drink. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. How much is it? Yeah. Oh, it's free? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. 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 But um, it's just about past experiences. and, and So why write it? If, you, if you're through it and you've got this life now with your, with your partner, um, I don't know if you're married yet or not, but your, your partner and your and your daughter and things are moving in the right direction. You seem really happy. Is this sort of a is this a reminder? Is it a is it a way to just kind of document that time and say, okay, I don't want to forget that 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 I that I I got I was there at one point in my life. Well, it's cathartic. Yeah, it's super cathartic um, to be able to tell your story and then reach out to people who maybe have gone or are going through it and at least bring like joy through music you know like you said it's like oh that's why music is here so if yeah. we get in a fight on the street yeah 
I don't, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I, I, I'm having a great day. Just little supplements of joy. It's so cool to live watching people and singing these songs with the people in the crowd. And it's just like, it's like all the shit of the outside just goes away. And it's just a dome of like joy and just like being excited to celebrate life. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Dude, you, you blow me away, man, as a, as a person. Every time I talk to you, I'm always struck by how generous you are Thanks. with your energy. Thank you, Zane. And um, how so much of your journey in the public eye has been trying to reassert through your talent why you belong whilst other people search for reasons why you don't. Sure. And yet you still show up and give people your time and you still give people a generous experience. Sure. Uh, life's too short to be a dickhead. I mean, there's that one I think time. that's the Bible verse. I don't know right? if anyone saw it, right? There was this kid who was just shooting a shot. And he decided it amongst of like, I, there's 50 or 100 people sitting or standing around post signing autographs and being generous and compassionate with people. And this kid just shoots his shot. He's just like, you suck, he's being that guy. Oh no, that was when he was like, tell my friend he has no Riz. And I didn't know what Riz was. Right. And I didn't want to say anything bad. Yeah. I was like, what's Riz? He goes, yeah. you're a bitch. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. He was shooting Because it drives shot. me nuts every day. He was shooting his fucking shot, right? <laughs> okay, I mean, we all know this kid, right? We've all had that friend who's like, I'm gonna be the one guy who's gonna just like say that shit well, yeah. and you'll be a legend. And your reaction was like, you just were so brilliant. You were like, that's not very nice. <laughs> And this kid was like, like 12 years old, oh. I can be, you're a bitch. <laughs> yeah. I can be, no way. That's what I mean. You're a bitch and you have no riz. But dude, you're, like, in a, you're in a very ego-driven world. Nah. There, there could have been some people who, and this is bad advice, would have just launched across at <laughs> this kid and tried to teach him a lesson, right? He probably, was a big 12-year-old. He, he was definitely <laughs> power forward for the basketball team. But I just, I just love the fact that, you know, you, you really, it, it was like, that's when I was like, oh, Posty's a parent now. Sure, yeah, man. I can't, I can't. Go around beating up people. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't shot. know. Yeah, well, that, was, that was before I was like, I don't know what Riz was. And people <laughs> try to get me to say all kinds of crazy shit. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. He's like, you're a bitch. And I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah. I was at the Arcteric store. I just wanted a jacket. <laughs> I just wanted to get a jacket and a face. Can you go to the Arcteric store without being called a bitch? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> You're a good dude, man. And Thank I think the so world much. is waking up to that now. And I think albums like this, which counter, which are a counterpoint to this generosity that you give people, which are, I'm also this very human person who's going through shit. Sir. Um, holding my breath. Holding, hold my breath. Hold my yes, breath. Sir. Yes, sir. I think it's actually my favorite song on the record. Thank you right very now. Much, sir. Thank you um, very much. That lyric about you're holding something essential mm. to mm. me. It made me feel like you were talking to your partner about your child. That's how it made me feel like sure. it was something like, it's the most open, it's, the, it's one of the most open songs about, about a relationship and the need for, and the very complex need sure. for being in a relationship. Yeah, sure. um, can you just talk a little bit about that song from your perspective? Sure. Um, writing that, I, I did the riff, and please don't ask me to play it because no. I need to brush up. It was something. But. I don't even remember. But then it, it's like the... Yeah, it's, it's a waltz. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's, a very, like, it's very like, it's like, it's like a ballad to the ballad, you yeah. know, of, of the, the ballads of old. But yeah. I don't know, it was cool. Um, I had that little lick at the beginning and I was trying, we all sat down and we're trying to, you know, figure out how that's going to fit into, you know, a chord progression or anything like that and we kind of gave up to go work on something else and so whenever you know Lou or Andrew goes in there to do like production and mixing stuff I'm just like hey can you guys just leave the the mic on and with the reverb and shit so I decided I wanted it to be open time so there's like no click and especially in the mm. beginning it's that also very much of that lick and then it comes in randomly yeah. and then during the verse it stops so yeah, it tumbles it's, you can yeah it's very it, there's no metronome on it's that a song and for, for lewis sure. that was a fucking nightmare 
But I was like, you know, this is the way we got to, hey, how they, they used to do it. How they used to do it. But then not only that, you got to kind of like freak the, and then. By the way, not being man. disrespectful to Lewis, who's a genius. Absolutely. Really no, absolutely. In the modern age. No, but that's, but that's for Lou, because Lou's like, you know, Lou's yeah. very like meticulous yeah. about every detail of the song. Yeah. So when I, I was like, Lou, there's going to be no click. Yeah. I'm going to play it however the hell I want. Beautiful. And then you, please deal with me and work around that. But, um, yeah, writing that and I don't know, the, in that session where I was just sitting there and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do open time. I just about wrote the whole thing. And I don't know, it was very, like a like, like you said, you know, it's a conduit and it just goes and, and went and the lyrics just felt super right. Um, and whenever, whenever I sang it, it was like, um, you're holding on to something special to me it's essential to me and that could like the way you interpreted it was mm. about the baby but i was just talking about my heart but you can interpret it anyway you could say mm. she's got the keys to your car or something or the keys to, or the keys to your heart <laughs> yeah exactly or anything you know it could and mm. that's what's cool about a song like that is it could really be about however you want it to be and that's the joy of music you know you know i i i I acknowledge and respect the privacy that you've really carefully um, built around this family that you that you that, sure. you, that you're building. I think it's amazing, and um, I think everybody deserves that that right to do that. Sure. Um, so the only question I want to ask you in relation to the dynamic that you're building for your future is um, this idea of laying down roots of building something because marriage and family is like mm. day one is like beautiful, and mm. it, but it's about day. A hundred thousand. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like it is a journey all the way to the end. Yes, sir. And it's only really it's only true value is acknowledged at the end of of time. And it could sure. be the end of that relationship or the end of the whole thing. Or just when the aliens come. Or when the aliens come. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but it requires the point being is it requires an enormous amount of work, right? Sir. It's it's not it doesn't serve the same purpose as something vacuous or quick or sure. lustful or this or that. Sure. Um, and it requires a lot of self work. Um, how is that transition from Post Malone, the mm. rock star, mm. literally, mm. to Post Malone, the family man, being how how is how is it for you? Is it is it is it a roller coaster? Are you how are you finding it? I really love hanging out with my baby, hanging out with the lady, playing video games, and in my garage working on projects. Like that's like what I love to do. And so it hasn't been that hard, but there's times to where you have, that it's that one drink that sets you over. So you're like, you know what, I'm gonna rage for like two days. But the difference is I don't rage like in social settings. It's usually me and a buddy and mm. we just stay up super late until mm. the sunrise and we're just drinking and sitting out on the car and mm. just hanging out listening to music we're removing the social aspect removing it. the social aspect of it and it's not like it's not full rage but it's just like and i think at those moments i'm like you know what i used to go nuts and um this is like significantly better you know, I'm not running around town and I'm not mm. like there used to be a time, especially at the beginning of our relationship, that I would just like Wild disappear. Out. Yeah. And just go for a week. And like I was like, oh, man, that's so shitty. I'm such a turd. Mm. Um, mm. But now I don't. It's it's been surprisingly easy because <clears throat> this is the stuff that I've always wanted to do. Like I'm a homebody. I never want to leave my house. I never want to leave the property and I just want to play games and watch TV and hang mm. with the family. So I'm, it's been super easy. Mm. There's, there's those nights that really go like, um, you know what? I'm going to party tonight. And then, but I don't leave the house. Yeah. But it's, to your <laughs> you point, know? it's, it's you within, the, it's within the framework of having something more precious than that exactly. to go back to. Exactly. Whereas I think if you didn't, the other way is to leave the house right. and maybe not even go come on. back. Yeah. And, and then like, I misspoke earlier when I said like rage for two days. Yeah. It'll just be from right. like nine to nine AM. You Who know am I, I mean? to judge? So I've done one of those with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was the last time I did one. And it may be the last time I do one. <laughs> you may have broken that for me. <laughs> but I, my, my whole thing was like, if your dad can keep up, then I can oh, keep man. up. And then I realized that your dad is going to keep up beyond all oh, of yeah, us. My dad will just, he'll be like, oh, you guys, well, come on, man. Come on. Your dad's Let's a roller. I still, I still yes, got his sir. number on my phone. Yes, sir. How is he feeling about about the man that you're becoming? It's an honest question because I, we spoke openly about that off the mm. record in France. I'll never repeat any of the conversations we had, but we talked about your growth at the time. You weren't even at the table. We were just chopping it up and he felt comfortable to talk to me. And it was mm. beautiful hearing from father to father how he felt about you. And even some of the challenges ahead that he sort of had your back and was one eye on you from a distance was mm -hmm. the vibe I always got. Mm -hmm. you always felt yeah, that very way? Very much so. He's, he's always been amazing. Um, He's doing great. He's a little more crotchety, um, but he's getting old. Love you, Dad. Um, but he's he's always been such a big inspiration and uh, support support beam. Mm. I don't know support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lifeline. I don't know. Yeah, so, something that supports something. An I beam or like a truss or something. I don't know. Keep going. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> um, but he's always been uh, there to have my back. So. Is he your sort of fallback when you need to talk to somebody, when you need some perspective? Um, yeah, more or less, more or less. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's, the hard, hard part for me is like, I don't really, I have a, a hard time talking to people about shit and that's why like music is so cathartic and so mm -hmm. special is because I don't really talk to it, but he's always like, hey, if you need to talk to me, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. And that's always been the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And even when I was up in my room as a kid with my headphones in mm -hmm. and just like, you know how like weird it is or awkward it is to, maybe not awkward, annoying for your parents to hear like an 11 year old kid just like try to be James Hetfield yeah. in his room with his headphones in so yeah. he can't hear shit and yeah. he doesn't know how loud he is. Yeah. And he was always like, you know what? Yeah, that's all right. Yep. Where's the, where's the art workshop? That's at Andrew's house. That's Andrew's house? Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did you choose such a candid photo like that? What did you like about it? I thought I looked real cute. <laughs> it's okay, you look cute. No, um, we, Andrew's house is really cool. It's like a very, I think, so someone in relation to Charlie Chaplin mm. um, was there. It might have been like an old screening room where they would like invite people in. So there's like a basement. He, there, it studio's downstairs and then you go out back and there's this big pool yeah. and a nice big yard. And I remember we worked all night and it was like 11 uh, a.m. Mm. when we stopped. Mm. And everybody had left and I wanted to stay and keep like writing and jamming some stuff. And mm. so we go upstairs and I'm like it is hot and bright and it is time for me to retire for the morning mm -hmm. um, and and one of Andy's um, like studio manager guys he came up and we were just hanging and had some brews and I was like you know what I'm gonna get a nipple and then we said, let's take a picture. And yeah. That's what we did. No, it's awesome. He snapped it and he got a moment. It is, it is a, it's one of those moments of like, um, like you say, in that tiny little space in between awake and needing to switch off. Oh, yes, sir. I want to talk about uh, one of the best songs I think you've ever written, which is Green Thumb. Thank you. That's very sweet. Thank um, you very much. Do you agree? Do you, are you no, proud of that song? I really like it. I really like it. I mean, I the story is heartbreaking and incredible. The so, idea of talking about somebody moving on and leaving behind a garden that ultimately represents the death of a, of a memory or a time that you knew, and mm. then like fast forwarding to the end of your sure. time is great writing. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's the only like breakup song where you talk to plants. <laughs> so it's novel. Sure, there's others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a lot about roses. Song. There's a lot about uh, roses. Oh, uh, yeah. Where does your green garden grow? Isn't that one? I'm sure. I don't know. I'm not, to, I'm not trying to bust your, bust your, bust the, your chops. On. The only one I know, okay? It's the best one. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's the newest and the best. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, but they're not actually talking to plants. Not to, maybe not talking to plants. <laughs> okay. That's, that, see, that's what that's what I, I love that idea of the... Of the, <laughs> what, are the, what, is the what, what does the plant say in the, the, in, in the first verse? Before... Oh, he was uh, he was dying. Yeah, and then he said, uh, "Tell her that." Yeah, wait. She's not coming. She's home. not coming yeah, home. Yeah, and then that's what the nurse says to you. Yeah, at the end of your life, because you died. Yeah, yeah. 
I, mean, I haven't done that yet. But. Beautifully depressing. Thank you very much. Which all, all great, a lot of great songs are. Yes, um, I don't want to let it go just yet, just because I, I do think it's a high point for you as a writer. What, what was going on when you wrote that? Like, what was the environment like? Again, is that just your subconscious at play? Same, it's an interesting concept. Same thing. Um, I remember, like, sitting, because me and Andrew wrote the chords, so. It's hard. It is. And then we go to the A. I was like, fuck it, let's make it weird. I was gonna say, yeah, it's a great change though. It's almost a classic California yeah. arrangement. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's, I don't know, a lot. Flower power is. Yeah, a lot of the flower, plants. Flowers are plants. There you go. Exactly. So there that's, you go. That's <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I, a lot of the stuff, chord wise at yeah. least, like that was a, it's a super Beatles walk down that it A is. to the A7 to the, or to the A whatever this is. And then there's a, to the wah, A7. Wah, 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 which is quite yeah. zeppelin y. Yeah, I don't know. That was a, it was a lot of fun to make. And um, yeah, we just kind of sat and he, he came with that little do, do, do. And then I was like, okay, we'll go to C, then we'll go to D. Mm. And then the verse completely changed. I was like, that A is so sick. Like, that's what I was yeah. talking about chords earlier. I was yeah. like, I want to do like, if you're sitting there writing the melody to the song and writing the music to the song, you can go to a different place and be like, Ehh. and like, be like, oh, okay, that's well, kind of, that's trippy. No, that's but you can. Cool. That's what's cool about this sure. album is that you've brought the, the chords and the arrangements together on this that... It, it is a un, it's uniquely you. Like there are just changes that you make, core changes and progressions that others I don't think would do. I wonder how it's going to relate to dancing post the and rock star post the and you know there's so many versions of hmm. you now. And this album to me is like a, a you know a very I mean are you going to play it with a band? How are you going to do this? Yeah, thing? so we're taking a band on tour first time. Yep. Yeah. Wow. First time. I think every record is super self-contained you get a little bit of everything some more than others but uh -huh. you get a little bit of everything and um it's gonna be so much fun this is my first time with a band so being able to experiment with them and see what new arrangements we can do with the music and cool transitions like we have a string section yeah and we were Crazy. talking about doing like zach and codeine like you remember that song yeah. from Beer Bongs? Um, yeah, and doing zoo, doo, 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 which would be fucking sick, but I don't and know. And with big BVs, because I mean, something real it needs the big BVs. Well, that's what the 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 background. Um, it's that's a tougher deal. Um, yeah, because the, they say I'm a little too ambitious. Isn't that what success is? Well, that's you? what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, I don't want to get in Dre's business, but isn't that what success is supposed to uh, allow it's, you it's, to be ambitious? It's walk hard, and he's like. It's walk hard, your get, Dewey Cox. I need a fucking art 50,000 didgeridoos. And that's what I sound like. I mean, oddly, you're asking for four <laughs> exceptionally good singers. Well, well no, with, see, I, the, I was not asking for four. I was asking for an entire choir. <laughs> right, so right, I was, right. You know what I mean? And they're like, yeah. well, logistically. And I'm like, why are you guys going to shit on me, man? 50,000 didgeridoos. Make it sound like velvet pancakes. That's the best movie of all time. I mean, but. yeah, it's a good film. <laughs> but you've made an album that to me is like, it, it needs to be brought to life in the most grandiose yes, way possible. Have you ever watched, I think it was Beck, hmm. did uh, a David Bowie cover mm -hmm. in the round mm -hmm. with like 500 musicians. It was like so, don't quote me on the number, mm. but it was so sick. Like he was standing in the middle and there was so many musicians and like redundancy and just stacking and like real like old school style. You have the like a dome place and people just playing at the same time, making it louder. And um, we're planning to do a, a playthrough, not as cool as that, not anywhere near as good as that, but something similar to that. So I'm excited to bring that um, vision. Uh, He's a great reference for you as well because I think about the multiple becks. And he's the guy who would come out there and do sure, Odelay sure. And, and do the robot sure. and then put an acoustic guitar on sure. and sing Nobody's Fault. Sure. <laughs> well, and that's, I don't know. There's, there's one show. There's no need to really 
contain yourself to anything. You make what feels right in yeah. in in the moment. And if you want to dance, you want to dance. If you want to play a guitar, you want to play a guitar. I don't know. And that's what's cool. I think you can go to a posty show and I sound like balls or whatever, but you never at least bad. it's entertaining. At least it's some it's something to watch. You at never least. sound bad. <laughs> that's what I can say about my shows. You it's never something sound to watch. Bad. That's one thing that no one can deny. And even your detractors in the past that perhaps weren't quite sure who you were, or what you were trying to achieve with your life, so they had to comment on it. No one can fuck with your vocals, bro. Thank you, sir. Who was it that told me? I think I don't want to say. I don't want to say because it'll make it'll, it'll it'll really compromise them. But somebody said to me, who's worked with a few people, mm. who's who's the best singer you worked with, and they said you. Well, that's very sweet. In terms of like just on it every time. Really? Mm -hmm. Was it Lou? No. <laughs> Try again. Go one more shot. Oh, shit. It's it's the other guy. What do you mean the other one? Well, it's either Lou or it's. Oh, Andrew? Yeah. Oh, okay. What the hell? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but Andrew, did, yeah, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah, Mr. Black. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Watt. Exactly. Dude, I don't know. It was so much fun, and that's very sweet of him to say. And it's just, I need, it's auto-tune. I'm a professional auto-tune manipulator, which is fine. You use it well. Which is fine. Thank you very much. I don't hear a huge amount of it on this record, though, so it must be very subtle. Yeah, it's, uh, well, Melodyne is godlike as well so <laughs> how's <laughs> business how's everything else going great Every, yeah. everything is still got your wine yes sir going well yes sir going well is that something that you kind of that you feel at this point that you've got enough on your plate um because i know that you only choose to collaborate with with businesses and things that you're passionate about i know sure. you wear crocs yes sir <laughs> so yes, sir. so you know what's your sort of attitude on that going forward because when you're successful people can put everything on the table for you but i mean you've got to leave enough time especially now as your parent and as an artist mm -hmm. to focus on the music well, yeah that's that's a hard thing too is not not only being a parent um being a musician, mm. a touring musician, mm. um, especially, um, and doing brand deals and doing the wine and doing all that stuff and doing like photo shoots and stuff like that. It's, it's tough. I'm getting a real kick in the ass. Mm. Um, cause I always, I wake up Every day with the baby and hang out with her because her her mom and her they wake up really early. Like, yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'll come in after Sleep working. Is not an option for I'll a come while, in bro. working all night or yeah. from working all night, and then they'll come and wake me up. We'll play for like thirty minutes, and then I'll go back to bed. Mm. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, that was too short. I felt like you can't go back to sleep. You cannot go back to sleep. That's the worst idea. Yeah, but I do it every time. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just the schedule keeps getting. I find the more that, you know, the world kind of opens back up and everybody's going on tour and everybody's doing stuff, which makes a lot of sense, but the schedule just keeps getting fuller. And now that I'm a dad, the schedule only got more full. And now that, you know, releasing new music schedule gets fuller and fuller and fuller, but the one thing that's constant is the amount of time in a day. And then the amount of time before we go on tour again or the amount of time before, you know. And that affects you differently now. Oh, very much so. I'm definitely more tired, which I was always tired before. But now I'm more tired. But. It's true. When you become a parent, you didn't even think it was possible to get more tired. But <laughs> you're like, no shit. There yeah, is more in the tired. tiredness <laughs> bank than yeah. you thought was actually yeah, very possible. Much. Very much. Um, as we're sort of coming to the end of this this chat, man, um, I wanted to talk about a little bit about what the future feels like because it's always felt a little bit premature to do so because you've been building, sir. You know, stony beer bongs, sir. You know, everything's been building up to these these great moments, and being in the moment's important. But obviously, now, like I said, you know, you. You're searching for a big plot of land to be able to mm -hmm. ultimately disappear to. Enjoy the fruits. Enjoy the fruits. To do that, you're going to have to take some control of that schedule, right? Yes, sir. Um, I have to put a baby through college. <laughs> so please come to my concerts. <laughs> please purchase my records. You don't have enough money <laughs> at this point. <laughs> For a college no, no, fund? No, she's going to space college. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. that's very yeah. different. Yeah, yeah it's very, that's very expensive. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but, Not far off the mark, probably, in the future. But here's the whole deal. I don't know. 
Do you worry about the future? Do you think about it at all? Clearly, uh, if you're buying big plots of land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and in, in different aspects. I think about, like, I want her to be able... People ask what, like, success is, and success is being able to do what you want to do and not have to worry about not being able to. Does that make sense? Yeah. If my baby wants to be an artist, right? I don't want her to be scared to be... I always bust your balls about it because there's a... Uh, tradition mm. um, to where uh, it's a Korean tradition where she goes, you put a bunch of stuff in front of her and she picks what she wants to be mm. with, at, at a year old and mm. picks what she's going to do in life. And she picked an artist, uh, like one of those like Michael's plastic. Uh, I want to say, what is this thing called? Palette? Like an easel? Like a, like a, it's not like a palette, yeah. but it was like one of the long ones that you had when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you're never going to make any money. <laughs> but, yeah, that was your but, yeah, I was like, oh. This God. from a guy like, who God dropped out of college, damn. moved to LA, and somehow became one of the biggest <laughs> autos on the planet. I was like, God damn it. Isn't kind of mad? And I put her back and tried to make her pick again. I was like, that, don't you want to make any of these? Isn't <laughs> but isn't that crazy though? Even though you literally did just that. You turn the impossible into tangible. Yes, sir. That when faced with the prospect of what you're, the future for something you hold dearer than yourself. Because mm -hmm. well, for the first time in your life, right, you love something more than yourself. Well, that's now I get where my parents are, were coming from. They're like, hey, you don't really want to do that. But um, like I said, I always bust your balls. But success and what I want to do is I want her to be able to not be scared to say, you know what? I want to make a painting of my own poop. Like who did the poop painting? Mm, Some, someone. I'm sure. But I was like, well, you know, maybe someone's going to want to buy it. Probably not. <laughs> but I want you to do that. And so. Isn't it just about them being happy? That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. I think that's pretty simple. But it's, and but it's but exactly well. That's the whole thing, and I just I don't want her to be scared to do what she wants to do in her life, and just like you I have. want I want to I guess incubate a, a creative and free lifestyle where she doesn't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? So I want to bust my ass. Well, I still can. My knees are going out on me. I'm 27. I talk like I'm. Like Zane Lowe's age, if you guys know, he's getting wow. Out there. <laughs> um, don't you think though, while we're in Parents Corner, don't you think that more than the money and the means, they I don't just know, that's a whole new thing for you, Parents Corner. <laughs> I think it's been done, and I don't know if I'm <laughs> the one. I'm doing my best, but I don't know if I'm the one. Don't you think more than the money and the means, though, they just want to look in your eyes when they do it and know that you believe in them? Well, that's not a. Well, I like to believe that's not a problem. And I was raised in a family, like I said, I bust your balls all the time. I'm like, oh, you're never going to make any money. That's sure. shit. You're going to be living with me forever. Sure. And she sure. doesn't even, you know, she doesn't talk. But, but she's listening. But I mean, that's the whole deal. I come from a family where it's just like we talk shit and just have yeah. fun. And, yeah. and that's like, I don't know, that's how we, that's how we bond. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's so bitching because I look at her and I'm like, oh, you can't do anything wrong. And that's the cool thing about being a dad. It's like, there's nothing you could do that could not make me love you. And I hope it's the same for her. And that's oh. the hard part about being on tour is like, you miss the, f I miss the fuck out of that baby, you know? But if you watch this, I'm doing the hard work so you can make paintings of, with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> As good as, there as go. good an objective as any. <laughs> what a fucking crazy ride, dude. Mm. I, I look over, as I reach my old age, mm. um, I think about, I think about the amount of conversations I've had with people who I love. Yes, sir. And I fall in love through the art. Yes, sir. And then I have the fortunate opportunity to meet people and yes, then I fall in love with the people. And, um, and then I watched it all happen like we all do, your journey is one of the most interesting. You know, coming from where you came from, striving for identity, trying to figure out who you were, 
with the voice no one could deny, but the identity wasn't formed. Sure. To get into this place now where that guitar is right next to you and the songs are the best you've ever written. Thank you, sir. If I could only remember the chords. Well, you better hurry up. <laughs> no, sh no shit. No shit. Because <laughs> you've got a band on top, yeah, right? No you don't shit. want those guys rolling their eyes behind your back. Well, hey, you know, you know what? what? They can tell me exactly what it is, but they always use too many. They put too many numbers in their chords, and I'm like, oh, I don't yeah, really know. It's too many numbers. Yeah. So what do I do? Your female <laughs> drummer's going to be like, yo, bro, get on fucking beat, bro. Get on fucking beat, bro. Give me tabs, get on dude. Give me beat, tabs. Bro. <laughs> Damn, you don't pay me enough for this shit. Uh, trust me, I know, dude. I'm so scared. I'm like, because these guys are like all top of the class. Yeah, I bet. And I'm just like, hey. Well, that's why you hire him. Me, auto tune. That's why you hire him. <laughs> but I am going to say this one time, man, sure. and it's, it, I don't want it to come across as being um, overly intrusive into what we've been discussing, but um, dude, you're not just an auto tune, dude. Like, there's, you, you can't auto tune soul. You can make a note sound better, and you can make something modern feel ready, but you can't put soul through an auto tune sure. and, and, and improve and, and try to alter the intention. Sure. The feeling is all you. Sure. And so that's all I want to say about this record is I, I didn't I didn't come for the beats and I didn't come for the auto tune. I came for the feeling. Sure. And that's what's across it. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Zayma. I love you. Thank you, Baba. You're the fucking best. <laughs> <laughs>